From the days of polio, our region has carved out a global reputation in the ongoing battle between human beings and viruses. And today, those front lines relate to viruses and cancer. And with us today are two winners of the prestigious uh, Carnegie Science Award being recognized for their work in this area. Yuan Chang is professor of pathology at the University of Pittsburgh Cancer Institute. And Patrick Moore is the leader of the Molecular Virology Program at the University of Pittsburgh Cancer Institute. And doctors, both, welcome to both of you. Thank you. Thank you. Everybody should have heard about you know, vaccines and cervical cancer in that area. I think a lot of people would be surprised to know how, how big a factor viruses are in a lot of cancers. Right, that's, that's really underappreciated by most people. One fifth of all cancers worldwide are caused by viruses or caused by infection, including viruses and bacteria. And uh, so our lab is geared towards trying to find out if the other 80% of cancers, if there's some other cancers that also are caused by new viruses that we don't know about. Because if you know they're caused by a virus, it does open the door potentially to a sure. vaccine or some kind of preventive treatment. Sure, absolutely. Uh, once, you have, once you know that a virus is causing cancer, then you can diagnose it and you potentially can treat it with an antiviral agent or you can prevent it, as in the case of, of the uh, cervical cancer prevention vaccine, which is geared towards the virus that causes cervical cancer. So, so the virus get a vaccine. The, the viruses you've been working on are, are which? Or which, ki which kinds of cancers are they associated with? So um, we found two viruses, and they're uh, predominantly associated with skin cancers. Not the more common skin cancers, but they're associated with two skin cancers. One is Merkel cell carcinoma, and the second one is Kaposi sarcoma, which are um, very severe problems in patients that develop these cancers. Well, Kaposi, I remember from the early days of the AIDS right. epidemic that that seemed to be the, the disease that showed up uh, when, with people whose immune systems have been compromised. That's right, that's right. So on top of the HIV virus, um, patients who have AIDS are also infected with a variety of other viruses and pathogens. And um, in this particular case, the virus that we discovered, Kaposi sarcoma associated herpes virus, will go on and cause KS in these patients whose immune systems are suppressed. Okay. All right. Can I also add that uh, KS is now the most common cancer in Africa, right. for example. And in some places, the majority of cancers that are recorded in some cancer registries are Kaposi sarcoma. And that's due to, in part due to um, the AIDS epidemic, but in part not but it's due to the presence of this virus in the people who, who develop this cancer. So you can see in different parts of the world, the importance of different cancers is different. And that's the reason why viruses are more important in, for instance, developing countries, which we're trying to target now, but there may be other cancers that are important for people in America and in Pittsburgh that are caused by viruses as well. How do you even begin to get your arms around which cancers might have, have a virus at the root of it? Well, almost all of these viruses that are associated with cancers um, actually um, become more obvious because patients who are immunosuppressed develop these cancers at a higher rate. And so that actually gives us a clue. Part of what we do in our lab is to hunt for viruses or new pathogens or look at additional cancers that might have an infectious cause. And when these cancers show up at a higher rate than is expected in transplant patients, patients who have HIV, basically immunocompromised individuals, then that sort of alerts us that this may be a cancer that's associated with an infectious agent. I hadn't thought about the transplant aspect, but another reason why Pittsburgh is exactly. a natural place right. to be doing this kind of research. Right. right, and that's what drew us here in part was because of the, the transplant setting and the the superb transplant um, facilities that are here that we hope to work with and we have been working with um, some of the transplant teams to see those patients who after a transplant, if they develop a cancer, is it caused by an infectious agent. So, so where are the two of you come from? To, get to find yourselves all, all in over. Pittsburgh. We've been all over. <laughs> <laughs> we recently moved, well, recently, we've been in Pittsburgh for seven years now, but we moved from New York. 
Okay. Yeah, we were at Columbia University before that. Oh, that's that's a win for our region, though. I, I love to hear somebody coming from Columbia. Why not, though? Well, Absolutely, more, of course. More, more importantly, coming here, we've been. It's important for us to attract other people, and that's what hmm. we've been trying to do: is build up this program at the Cancer Institute to recruit the very best scientists from all over the world, actually, who are interested in the concept of viruses and cancer to address this problem. And we've been busy recruiting them, and I think we've been really successful in getting very, very talented young scientists from Harvard, from Cleveland Clinic, from other places to come join our group, and, and we're recruiting them to Pittsburgh to oh, really tackle exciting. these problems. Well, great to hear it. On, on behalf of the region, thanks a lot, and congratulations yeah. again on the Carnegie Award. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. And we'll be back in a moment with a little bit more of our region's business. Stay with us.